started it first. It was the Frenchman from the North American Company. They brought 500 blankets down. They had them made and they brought them down. And one of the fellows from Hudson's Bay saw that they, the natives were just there and they were gone. So they decided, hey, we should turn around and make the blankets. And on the blankets, if it doesn't have that label, it's not a Hudson's Bay blanket. I've got some in there. You can't tell. And the sad part, a lot of people take these things off so that when you go and buy them, you can't tell. And there's more than 17 different varieties of the blankets. Hudson's Bay standardized the blanket itself. This is four inches wide. It's a four inch, sorry, Bill. It's a four inch gap, four inches again, and once again, it started green all, all the way down. And the black, which looks like black, that's not black, that's indigo color. Now, uh, the Canadian Armed Forces, Hudson's Bay, went and they made over 500 blankets for the Canadian Armed Forces when I joined the Army and when Joe joined the Army. He had a red one with a, just a single black, but it didn't have the Hudson's Bay Company logo on it. The Army was too cheap, I guess. But, uh, and uh, there's one, I have one in there, a brown one, that uh, it's a fairly rare one. But if you can find a pink one, that's the one you want to get. The pink one, they turned around and, and uh, made it for Queen Elizabeth. So it's a fairly recent blanket, but it's a very rare one. So turn around like if you find one of those, but you're gonna spend a few thousand dollars just to buy it. When they, Hudson Bay took over. This person over here made them and they standardized them. But yet, when they putting the weaving together, it's fairly thick. So what they do is they lay the blanket out like this here. And they got just like a tennis racket. And they go and beat it to push it all down. And, it's, uh, and then they started with the looms, which had the natural roller to roll it down. But like I said, the, uh, the Hudson Bay blanket, it's, it's hard. You can go to Hudson Bay right now and buy them, but it's not the same as getting ones like this. I have one in there that somebody took the label off. You can see where the label was. But it's a real old one. This yellow, it hardly shows up at all. The other colors are really faded right out. And I have some in there that have holes in them. This one, these ones belong to Fort Langley. And I haven't seen any, any like that. Yes? Jim, do they still make uh, what they would consider authentic uh, Hudson Bay blankets? Are they still yes. being made today? Yes, they are, and they will have they will have this label on it. Now, you can tell if you have the book, you can tell when it was made because there's certain writings on the label. This is a medium-sized label. They have a great big label, and then they have the little small ones about two inches by two and a half inches. If you have the book from Hudson's Bay you can tell when the blanket was even made. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, they still make it. They will make a coat, that, a shorty coat. They made them for the uh, Olympic team. And you can buy them if you go to Hudson's Bay. Uh, the UCN Abbotsford have 
a model of it and everything else, and they have different blankets, different sizes. I've got a, a, a child's blanket in the other room, just a very narrow one. But uh, the thing is, Hudson Spade said, okay, you're going to have two pounds worth of wool in it. Before, when they were making them, when you, people were making them, whatever amount of wool they had and poured it down and poured it and how they made it was a lot different. But like I said, Hudson Spade was very smart. They saw one, the Frenchman had the, uh, sold so many of them, and they said, hey, that's good. Now there's a lady with a red Hudson Spade blanket. And at, at first, it was the chiefs, because this was expensive, very expensive to buy a Hudson Spade blanket. And they had pure white ones, and all they did was wrap it around them, and they would go out hunting the buffalo in the wintertime. So it just looked like a big snowball moving all over the place, instead of a human. And then they started that they would wrap them, just wrap them around, and I guess one of the ladies decided, hey, why not make a coat of it? And it takes, this is one Hudson Spade blanket to make this coat. And I was told that it's special because if you're not married and your fiance gets cold, you can wrap them in together. <laughs> and hold them right in. So that's how you size it? <laughs> yeah. It depends because they have, like I said, from baby blankets to king size blankets. The uh, brown one that I have in there is a king size. <clears throat> is there any questions at all? What about the stripes? Well, how, oh. This tells you the weight of the, of the up to seven. Okay, this is a four. Okay, this is a four point blanket. They call them points. And it'll go, you can get them up to seven. And that's, like I said, Hudson's Bay took over and they said, right, we're going to standardize everything because we're getting all these different ones. So the, uh, oh, go ahead. What, is, what do the points mean? Like a better quality or a no, different type of blanket? It's a size. Oh, okay. More okay. than okay. size and, and weight. Okay. When you get a seven point one, like the, the brown one, mm -hmm. it's got a little more wool in it. Okay. And that's what Hudson Spade did. They standardized it. So it's all mm -hmm. standard. And this is all just added later. So what came first, the Hudson's Bay or the Northwest or Trapper's Blanket? The, the Trapper's Blanket is what they called this at the beginning. And then they called it the Chief's Blanket because you want three or four skins or so, who could afford it but a Chief? If you were an ordinary trapper putting it in, you'd like to get one blanket, one skin. So it, it was rare at first that other people had these because it costs so much to turn around and get them. And then finally they, I guess, smartened up and said, wait, <clears throat> let's make it for everybody and we can sell them on. But it's said, uh, if I go outside right now and it comes down raining, this gets soaking wet, I'm still warm. This acts like a wetsuit. Keeps it. Once the rain gets it, it soaks it down, it, the rain warms up from your body. Okay. Yes? And um, what is the hat for? <laughs> There's a, a hood on the back. And the thing is, a tail. <laughs> There's a tail on it. They shorten this. It used to be way down almost to the floor, so you could take it 
I get that. But anyhow, there it is. You take it and you bring it around, and that's your scarf. You've always got a scarf with you. But the trouble is, with it being real long, and you flip it down, you sit down, you sit on the scarf, and you rip it off. So, in the modern times, you just made it shorter. So it used to be real long at one time. Yeah, uh, Jim, I noticed that uh, your uh, sash on yes. this one here is a uh, Hudson Bay color. Yes. Now, the, uh, is it traditional to use that or the Métis sash? Either. This Hudson Bay and that one there, you don't cut it with a pair of scissors. You just put a little nick in it and pull it, and it will go straight. Well, when they made this one here, which I'm heavy but not that heavy, this piece came off the inside part of it, and they split it when they were making all the different, your arm and your, your uh, hood piece. And some of them have this on, and some of them don't. It's up to the person that's wearing it, whether you put the cape part on it or not. And then all the extra little frills are just added, added to it. It's a decoration, right? Yes. Okay. Is, is there a purpose for this? The, the, the that, yeah. The, the cape? Frill? No, the cape. Well, the cape? Yeah, yeah you, can, you can pull it around as well. When you pull it around and then pull your Paddle. your long scarfing, mm -hmm. it just gives you more around protection up front. Yeah. The only bad thing about this, when when you pull it right up and then you put it like this here, and you see something, you know, somebody can see me, but is that a male or a female? You can't tell until you get the right clothes. But it is warm, very warm. Any other questions? Just one more, Jim. Yeah. Uh, uh, who was your tailor? Who made that for you? So. We had it made, and my wife's got one in the other room, up the Bear River. Yvonne Clark. This lady has. She's got maybe 50 blankets. I've, I brought this blanket in myself and my wife, but you can go up to her house and pay for a, a blanket and have her to make the coat. She will take some measurements and look at you. She has some pre-made ones, and she'll put it on you to see whether, okay, a four point or a five point or six point, that will fit around you. And I know Bill doesn't have his here, but he has a red one similar to that lady. And once again, he won Clark made it for us. What do they cost usually? No. If you take the blanket yourself, about two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars. If you buy the blanket, you add that cost to it. It depends on how much she pays or if you want a special one, like if you want the brown one I have in, in there, it would cost you seventy, eight hundred dollars for it. I better not use my pink one, eh? <laughs> pink no. ones are several thousand dollars if you can find them. I got two. Wow. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't have a clue they were worth that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be moving them when I get home. That's <laughs> <laughs> not unless I get there first. <laughs> <laughs> well, What's your address uh, again? <laughs> that is made for Queen Elizabeth when she was coronated, and that's one of the reasons why it, it costs. Hmm. You're not borrowing them anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> is there any other questions that I can answer? <laughs> I don't know.